आई एम मोहम्मद हबीबुल मौला असिसटैंट प्रफेसर डिपार्टमेंट अब इंग्लिश आर्म पुलिस बैटालियन पब्लिक स्कूल एंड कलेज बोगरा टूडे आई उल डिसकस उथ यू अबाउट एन इम्पर्टेंट टपिक दैट इज मडिफायर what is called modifiers just now i will going to discuss about this this topic and at the same time you will know about some of the important problems that is uh, what is called infinitive infinitive then appositives then quantifiers and premodifiers and then postmodifiers this is my target today i will discuss these five points and before discussing this i will uh, i like to tell about modifiers if you think about this word modifier modifier means the word or phrases that modifies suppose uh, i am writing a sentence i am a good player it's a complete sentence and you know this is subject and this is finite verb and a good player this is noun phrase and at the same time i will discuss about s p c a these four things you will get s means subject p means predicator c for complement and a for adjunct then what is noun phrase noun phrase is that kind of phrase which will contain one head word suppose this is the noun and this good a good player player is the noun here and what kind of player he is good this is modifier this is modifier dear listeners please pay attention to me modifier and this is called determiner it will fixed it will fix the number determiner good player then what kind of player good player good here modifies the player the head word and this noun is called here head word head word is uh, explained here by the modifiers and modifiers may uh, take position before the head word and it may take position just after the head word so before and after these two positions will contain two names if it text position before the noun then it will call pre modifier then it will call pre modifier and if it takes place takes its position just after the head word then it will be called uh, post modifiers then i am writing one sentence as an example english is an dash language use pre modifier you will have to solve the problem so think the same thing about the sentence english is the subject here then is is the predicator that is finite verb and it's an article that is determiner and language is the head word then we will have to add modifier then what's modifier i have already explained modifier is that kind of word or phrase that explains the head word 
speaks something about the headward sitting before the headward or after the headward. So, English is an dash language, we think that English is an international language. So, I can write here international language. Is it a successful pre modifier? Try to find out the meaning. English is an international language, language is the headword, and what kind of language it is? It is international. This international explains the quality of the language. What kind of language it is? International language. So, it is clear that it is a successful pre modifier, it is a successful pre modifier. Dear listeners, if you think about another sentence, suppose Dhaka is a large city, then which word is the pre modifier here? Large. Why? Because city is the head word here, it is the main noun and this word that is large, it explains about the city. Dhaka is a large city, what kind of city it is? It is a large city and this word is before the noun, so it is it takes its, takes its position before the noun, so it is called pre modifier and we can easily think that this word is a successful pre modifier. Probably you have understood what I have already said. Then I am going to discuss with you about post modifier. What is post modifier? Post modifier, post means after and pre means before pre means before, pre means before and post means after. Dear listeners follow me, I saw the boy, I saw the boy playing in the field. I saw the boy playing in the field. I saw the boy playing in the field. Here I is the subject, so is the finite verb. The boy, uh, this is the object here, playing in the field, the boy was playing in the field. That is, this is the noun or head word, and playing in the field, these phrase qualifies the boy that is I saw the boy if I finish this word using full stop here then think about this I saw the boy it is complete sense but I have added this phrase playing in the field this participle is used here I saw the boy playing in the field here playing in the field qualifies or modifies the boy the boy who is playing in the field. This is uh, called post modifier. Why? The group of words here explains the boy. What kind of boy? Who the boy? Whom I saw? I saw the boy playing in the field. The boy who is playing in the field is seen by me. So, the playing in the field, this group of words, this phrase explains the boy and it, it takes its position just after the head word. So, it is called post modifier. So, it is clear that post modifier is what and where it is used. Then follow the another sentence, I will discuss about these four things that is subject, predicator, complement and adjunct later on. Uh, before this I want to finish my topic. I saw the boy playing in the field just like this sentence, she met the beggar. She met the beggar standing at the door. She met the beggar, she is the subject, finite bar, the beggar is the object here and this noun that is this noun phrase NP is followed by standing at the door. She met the beggar, who is the beggar? Who is standing at the door? So, from 
here to the last point standing at the door this group of words is called post modifier. I think these two topics are clear to you. Then I want to discuss about infinitive. Infinitive is a combination of two words that is uh, preposition to plus root form of verb. Look at the sentence I saw him to sing to sing a song. I saw him to sing a song. Here to sing it is infinitive. Infinitive is a non finite verb. Infinitive is a non finite verb. It proves that if we get any infinitive, then we, we will surely find out one finite verb. And as it is a non finite verb, so it has no ability to complete the sense of the sentence and infinitive is a non finite verb. So, we will find out one finite verb in, the, in that very sentence. I saw him to sing a song. To sing is the infinitive here and it is a non finite verb. Suppose they saw him, they saw him to go to the market. Here we have got these two and two. What is the difference? The difference is that just after two here we have got one noun phrase to the market and taking these two this noun phrase will turn into prepositional phrase. But this infinitive this is infinitive to go why we have got here two things that is two plus root form of verb two plus root form of verb or base form of verb. If we get these two things in any sentence then we will uh, call it infinitive and infinitive is surely a non finite verb and the sense will complete the finite verb of the sentence and infinitive uh, requires at least one finite verb. Dear listeners, I have already discussed my three target topics, then I am going to discuss about appositives. What is apposition? Apposition means explanation. The words or group of words will explain the subject or object. This is called appositives. Then think about it. Dhaka the capital of Bangladesh is a large city. Here we have got another uh, um, at least two informations that is Dhaka the capital of Bangladesh it is an information and the large city it is an another information. Dhaka the capital of Bangladesh the capital of Bangladesh this group of words it sits just after the subject and it says something about the subject and this is called I have already uh, erased the topic S P C A C for complement and Dhaka the capital of Bangladesh this is complement to the subject that means these words explain the subject. If we get more information about the subject then this group of words will be called complement to the subject and if we get more informations it may be phrase or words uh, then it will be called uh, complement to the object. Suppose I eat rice my staple food 
I eat rice, my staple food. This group, that is my staple food. It's a phrase. But this phrase explains rice. And rice is the object here. Rice is the object here. If any group of words, group of words explain the subject, then it is called complement to the subject. And if any group of word explains the uh, object, then it will be called complement to the objects. And both of these complements are called appositives. My dear students, please think about it. What is apposition? If we deduct these words, the capital of Bangladesh, then we can get a uh, complete sense. Dhaka, the capital, we can erase comma here. Dhaka, the capital of Bangladesh. I eat rice, my staple food. If we erase this, Dhaka is a large city. This group of words, Dhaka is a large city, it is a complete sense. Complete sense. And dhaka is the subject here and is is the finite verb. If we get any subject and one at one finite verb, then it is called simple sentence. Dhaka is a large city, it is a simple sentence. Then what is the function of this group of words? The capital of Bangladesh. This noun phrase, what is doing it? The capital of Bangladesh, it explains dhaka. That means apposition means explanation. If it explains, if it explains the subject, then it is called Apposition to the subject, and if it explains the object, then it is called apposition to the. Then it is called uh, apposition to the complement to the object. Suppose uh, Dhaka, the capital of Bangladesh. This, this this group of words explains Dhaka, the subject of it. Then it is called complement to the subject. And I eat rice, my staple food. My staple food explains rice. Then it is called complement to the object. And both of these are appositives. I think it's clear to you. My dear listeners, please follow me. Adjunct. What is adjunct? Adjunct means addition, additional um, word or words it may be. Then it is called adjunct. adjunct. Then quantifier. What is quantifier? Quantifier means quantity. It will explain quantity. Suppose we say our prayer dash times. We say our prayer dash times. How many times we say our prayer? Five. This is called quantifier. Then it is very easy if we get the meaning of the sentence, if we understand the meaning of the sentence and then we will be able to uh, use the quantifiers easily. Suppose there are dash seasons, there are dash seasons in Bangladesh. There are dash seasons in Bangladesh. What should you use here? There are six seasons in Bangladesh. This is called quantifiers. So, my dear students, I have already discussed my five targets and just now I am going to take the revision and before this I will uh, again discuss about subject, predicator, complement and adjunct. I have already discussed three things that is subject, subject is the person uh, that acts, uh, that uh, finishes or works in a uh, finishes or works in any sentence and this is uh, predicator that is finite verb and then complement to the subject and complement to the object and then adjunct. These five things we have already discussed and just now I want to uh, take the revision and before this I like to say something about uh, adjunct. There are six seasons in Bangladesh, uh, Bangladesh, where we live in peace. These are the extra words, in peace. This is called adjunct. These words 
are explaining the subject or object and adjunct will finish or supply more and more information about the subject or object and this is called adjunct. My dear students, I think all these things are clear to you. But before finishing my speech, I like to uh, discuss again in a nutshell what is infinitive. I have already discussed it. Infinitive means 2 plus root form of bar. 2 plus root form of bar. This is called infinitive. Then what is a positive? A positive means explanation. It may be about the subject. If it is about the subject, then it will be called complement to the subject. And if it is about the object, then it will be called uh, complement to the object. And both of these are called appositives. And this group of words uh, does not qualify what kind of sentence it is. This only explains the subject or object. I have already discussed the thing, discussed these things. Quantifiers. What are the quantifiers? Quantifier means the quantity, the number. In a sentence, if we get any problem about the number of, uh, about the numbers, then we will have to use their according to the meaning. This is called quantifiers. What is pre-modifier? Pre-modifier means one kind of adjective or adjective phrase that sits before or takes its position before the uh, headword. And if it takes its position just after the headword, then it will, it will be called post-modifier. And if it takes its position before the noun or headword, then it will be called pre-modifier. And pre-modifiers and post-modifiers are both of these explain the noun or headword. So, uh, in this class, my target was uh, modifiers. I have already discussed about five important problems and there are uh, another problems also. Suppose use of possessive, uh, use of uh, articles, use of um, determiners. In my next class, I will discuss the uh, another topics. But what I have done today, I have discussed five main problems. If you remember this class, then you will be able to uh, answer at least five problems out of ten. I think uh, this class will help you. And today, I want to finish here. And uh, this is the end of my speech. So thank you. Thank you very much.